Hello friends, my name is Theo and today this exciting music media tutorial has been brought to you by Sonata. They're a new music licensing service that has songs that are actually good even if they weren't being used for a video. So I'll talk to them more at the end of the video, but quick little anecdote. When I was browsing through music for this, I accidentally just left it on on the play and was just sort of jammed to the music. And how often does that happen with the stock site? So in this video, we're going to talk about three different ways to change audio level. One for speed, one for precision, and one for automation. Now, I know that sounds kind of boring, but audio is one of those things where if you do it right, it can really make your video so much better to a ridiculous amount. So if we play this through just a little bit without the music, you had to take some proper measurements. Like this is pretty boring. We turn the music on, and once again, we're going to fix these audio levels later. But here. <laughs> Like, that's a million percent cooler just by adding audio. So this is, of course, a track from Sonata. Thank you, Sonata. But here, we'll first talk about the fast way to change the volume. So this is a super useful technique, but one of the ways I'm going to show you of using it, I don't see used all the time, and it makes editing so much easier. So here is the normal way. You just click on this bar, and you raise it up super fast. You do the whole clip. You can, of course, go over to your inspector as well and raise the volume up. This is kind of boring. If you select a couple of clips at once, you can, of course, change them all that way as long as they're starting at the original volume. But here is the interesting thing. If you're changing audio levels, all you need to do is put a split in a clip. So here we want quieter audio here, and then we want louder audio here and quieter audio here. And we can just change the level simply like this. And then by adding a transition in, control T and control T. And now if we play this through, show you how to take some proper measures. See, not only do we have volume automation there, but if we want to change things around, it's very easy to change where our edit point is. And if we select you know, multiple edit points at once and go in trim mode, you see we can very easily have our audio follow our edit easier than if we're doing this other way, which is using keyframes. This is the precise way of managing our audio. If we scroll in and hold down Alt and click, we can create keyframes. So now we can sort of fix people trailing off. I really like using the keyframes for stuff like this. We're sort of evening out the levels of people's audio to make it a little bit nicer, especially when people trail off at the end like this. This can be really good. And now I often see people using this technique for automating like we did here. So let me select these clips and duplicate them down, mute this guy, and just undo what we did here. So I'll get projects from people that will be automating this volume like we're doing here. So alt click, We'll move this over and I'll click. You see already how long this is taking and annoying it is. It's trying to click on this little line to create keyframes and then I have to drag this down. And then if we wanted to make, you know, an edit here, like make this shorter and have it start sooner, we would have to select these two keyframes by doing like, this is terrible. So if you're, if you're managing your audio this way, don't because you see how much better it is to do it the fast way that we talked about before. So keyframes are just for precision adjustments for me, like we're doing here. Let's go ahead and do a little bit more. And I'm just not even having to preview this, just looking at the waveforms and making it look a little nicer. Here we go. You see when we're split up, we can make this a very quick process. And now if we unmute our music and play this through. Hi, I'm Grayson. And I am Kelsey. And we're here to show you how to take some proper measurements. You can hear how much better that was, especially at the end with the proper measurement. The first measurement is around the neck. Simply wrap your tape measure around where the Adam's apple usually sits on. And here I'll just use a transition at the end to clean up that little last bit. Usually sits. Now this is a little scary because you have to go into Fairlight for this, but if you're an, an audio engineer, then this is going to excite you, and this is side chaining. So if we go over to our Fairlight page, which is Shift 7, or click on this little button down here. And then you see we've got our Audio 1, which we can label as our VO, and Audio 2, which we'll label as Music, just to keep things a little nice. And here, if we select Dynamics in our mixer, make sure that your mixer is open for our first track, Dynamics. And see if we turn to the compressor and hit Send, then what this will do is it will send our audio from this channel to another bus that we can listen to in another compressor. So what a compressor does is if it detects the audio is above a certain level, it brings it down. And if it's not above that certain level, then it just leaves it there. So basically what this will be able to do is it will 
use this track to control the volume of this track. So we've sent the audio from this track, and now we will receive it over here. So hit listen on our compressor, make sure it's on, and I'll bring the threshold way down. We'll make this really, really dramatic move. And we're here to show you how to take some proper measurements. So here, if we listen to... ...is around the neck. Simply wrap your tape measure... So you can hear how the volume how the volume is coming up and down. And I'll make this really dramatic just so you can really hear what is happening by bringing our attack and release down. The first measurement is around the neck. Simply wrap your tape measure around where the Adam's apple usually sits. So you can hear how that's ducking your audio down. If I turn the compressor off... The first measurement is around the neck. Simply you can hear. wrap your tape measure around where the Adam's apple usually sits. Nice. So we can make this a little less dramatic. Bring our threshold up, bring our ratio down. And uh, how to use a compressor you know, warrants its own own whole video, but we'll just make this a little longer release. So basically the attack is how fast this gain reduction happens and release is sort of how slowly it, it comes back to normal. The first measurement is around the neck. Simply wrap your tape measure around where the Adam's apple usually sits. So at the end of this, if we make this release super long, around where the Adam's apple usually sits. You can hear how slowly the music is coming back up. Well, if we make this super short, around where the Adam's apple usually sits, it comes right back up. So here we'll give it a little bit of a fade, but now you can see just how easily we've automated that volume. So, so we have these big changes that we know we want here whenever the B-roll comes up, but we also have our voiceover pushing the music down whenever it's happening and then bring it back up when it's not. And this will help everything sit together a lot nicer. So these three techniques when combined together will help you move really fast and get really nice clean audio without too much work. So once again, sort of reviewing this, we have the fast way, which is cutting the clips and using transitions and then just doing big gain adjustments. We have the precise way, which is using keyframes to even out our volume. And we have the automated way, which is using sidechain compression. So now if we play our whole little clip through with our audio, Hi, I'm Grayson. And I am Kelsey. And we're here to show you how to take some proper measurements. The first measurement is around the neck. Simply wrap your tape measure around where the Adam's apple usually sits. See, just like that, our video is so much better than before whenever we had no audio stuff happening to it. So I hope you like this. Once again, big shout out to Sonata because I wouldn't have made this video without them. One, they just provided the music for this, which is great. And two, I normally wouldn't be incentivized to make audio tutorials because they really don't get as many views as like our color ones, but they're so important. So check out Sonata. They are a great service. I've talked to the guys there. They're super cool. I'll have a link in the description for a free trial. Check it out. Once again, 30 days free. And during that 30 days, if you download a song and use it in the project, you can just use it like that. You know, obviously you can't go through and download a bunch of songs and then use them later on. But if you're like doing vlogs or something where you're turning around fast, hey man, this is a pretty nice way to get some free music. So check it out. Obviously, if you like it, subscribe. They are competitively priced and they really do. Like I said before, I was listening through tracks and just sort of let it play and didn't notice it was on. It's just like, it's just like I was listening to a Spotify playlist of cool songs. So check them out. Once again, huge, huge thank you for their support for this. And then one more plug at the very end for the course, meester.media slash training. If you like this sort of stuff, once again, this project is, these clips are from one of the projects that we do in that course. So sign up there if you want to hear more. Hopefully I'll be wrapping that up one of these days. It's a huge project, but it should be great when it's done. So thanks for sticking around this long. I appreciate those of you who did stick around past the ad read because really I know that as a viewer, sometimes ad reads can get a little annoying, but it really is. I wouldn't have made this video if I wasn't <laughs> sponsored to do it. So if you liked it, you know, check them out. They're, once again, really cool people. So once again, I've been Theo with Meester Meetup. We have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.